welcome back to my channel ladies english literature today we are going to discuss hendy vaughn's the retreat a beautiful metaphysical poem uh, that adds our philosophical notion of this life and the aftermath of life and the philosophy that he has exhibited is quite akin to our indian philosophy of life and death that particular poem adds to our interest as it is a idealization of childhood days yeah, and here the poem is a very lyrical in its note if we can get this poem critically and analyze its context and text uh, we will find it is a beautiful metaphysical and a beautiful religious poem it if we term it as a religious poem simply we say that the here the religion is nothing but a personal identification with his own soul with the soul of god and that identification or reunion of that sort of thing or the meeting with that supreme lord with whom we all desire to meet in one day is typically indian so let's read hendy vaughn's beautiful poem the retreat hendy vaughn wrote religious verse and his religious verse are a typical mystical character with casho and george harbard uh, the he is in that group of metaphysical poets of that caroline age where metaphysical poetry has its religious the best of his work which we all know is silex sintilans that particular collection of short poems of deep religious feelings and exquisite expression are typically metaphysical and before we begin what is metaphysical metaphysical is simply beyond physical world or the imageries or complex imageries or the complex expression of the poet which exhibits extra strata of thinking or a extra layer of um, deep philosophical prank become a metaphysical poem in simple word the words or the expression or the phrases that the poet exhibits in this particular poem is not straight forward one but it has some concepts it some that is typically called metaphysical concept which which is a concrete one compact one a bit of it is said but much of it is meant by so in vaughn's poetry where the typical uh, metaphysical concepts are pregnant so from silex sintilans and this particular retreat poem has been taken and in this poem where we find a beautiful suggested way into the way of innocence or into the way of journey to the childhood in us in every human being we always desire that our childhood had been a so polite light and peaceful journey of life that we better live in that phase of life to make a peace of mind that particular expression has been exhibited here the innocence of the childhood which is akin to christ's purity love and innocence that has been exhibited in the little lamb little child is also being expressed here where we all the human being desire to go into the domain of childhood of peace love and purity and that is akin to human existence through the medium of through the gambit of religious favor of supreme lord that was published in 1650 in two parts the title of that particular anthology largely gives some religious inspiration and its title is significant for the emblem on its title pages and that is quite revealing one here uh, he is a um, picture of a heart of flint burning and bleeding under the st- strike of a thunderbolt so throwing its part so here is uh, a particular imagery that uh, through this uh, through this cover page through this Uh, uh, cover uh, cover printing it has exhibited uh, it tells simply that uh, 
we the human being are always ready to be inspired by the godly feeling and we are invited to that spirit if not each and every human being should have been perished before so simply each and every heart that we possess is the very heart of the universal father whose spark is always needed to remain alive to remain godly or to remain you know this particular poem influenced towards what in the composition of immortality ode or which is popularly known as recollections of early childhood the ode bonds this retreat is a religious lyric that i have already shared it and here uh, there is a note of uh, optimistic and the also it's a characteristic poem of metaphysical school that i have only hinted here bonds expressions and imagery bear the mark of a religious quality and that religious component is quite metaphysical concepts so here we will study the poem both on the plank of metaphysical as well as a religious but here starts the two things together intermingled we will not find out separately what the religious point is and what the metaphysical point is rather here metaphysical religious concepts are being exhibited to express his feelings or express his inner meaning or his saying bond's first love in this poem is god happy those early days when i signed in my angel infancy yes that angelic infancy of the poet is what he dreams of those were the happy days happiness from the core of heart happiness with innocence one person cannot be happy if he is bored with the boredom of worldly living and that living is worthless as it is materialistic it always counts the prosperity of human being in terms of money in terms of wealth whereas the true happiness does not count all these aspects it is like that of a pure innocence which is akin to godly happiness truly when he was still a child he hardly made any progress into worldly existence he could have a glimpse of god's bright face whenever he looked back because the god's abode is very near to his childhood because that very theme of paradise is told here it is a, it is a biblical influence it is a biblical reference as well as we all think that there is a ever burning fire in the abode of god where the souls are being constantly born and reunites after death so out of that fire the little bit of fire is inputted in our heart and we are born in the childhood the abode of god that palm trees that golden 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 citadel of god had from we just afoot a few steps in that is world and after living many years many years we did it once again into the abode of god and our second living that is the earth is like that of a sojourning here like that of a passing travel here the our real home is the home of god where the pyre of soul is ever burning ever emitting its luminous fire simply the burden of this worldly existence gradually grew up up we lost the glimpse of divine episode of human we have lost the divinity of humanity how by the hammering of our materialistic jargon or materialistic word so we are lost from the path of god the divinity of humanity is as pure as the divinity of 
God because God has sent us in this world with the purity of soul but we have corrupted it by the foul emotions by the crimes by the sins that day by day we collect by the means of accumulating our desires our carnal desires the adulthood taken away that divinity that vision of childhood the sins one after another pop up in our head in our brain in our heart and we become the victim of our body the burden of desires become heavier and we lose the glory of god with whom we were sent in this beautiful world to live von new that he has lost many a thing many a joy of life but all this joy we are ready to be diminished with the compensation of godly love and divinity but even if he lost all of them by the burden of adulthood because everywhere this world is so heavier by the very desires of us our emotions that we sometimes lose our path and without knowing it we remain in a place and find i once out lost because our degradation is not being remembered we lost but we don't know when and how we have lost the glory of the god before i understand this place yes the author has not understood this place how this place is made for god how is this place by god how is this place meant to be with innocence with purity with love with patience but we are appointed here for a second race but not without the grace of god but we have lost that path and or, then he says or taught my soul to fancy art but a while celestial thought when yet i had not walked above a mile or two from my first love the fancy of childhood the poet has seen many a dreams many a love scenes of that celestial presence of god yes those were the celestial thoughts the thoughts the image is the love that is akin to living at the abode of god as i have told the author has born as a human being we in fact all are born as a human being and our childhood is only but a steps away from the god's home a mile or two away from my first love the poet has recognized the god at the age at the end age at the age when it is telling heavy upon the upon him the burden of this universe the burden of thought the burden of desire the burden of materialistic look but when this philosophical awakening is made he is aged one and looking back at this short pace he could have seen the bright face of the god as when he was in his childhood he could easily see the yeah. god who is living just a foot away a miles away because the journey of the soul has just entered into his parts past page had the power to look at his bright face the brightness of the god is as bright and as luminous that only but a innocent eye can look at it if it is blackened or is or if it is heavier by the burden of our existence we will be unable to see all those steps or all those faces all those floating clouds in on those flowers he could have seen 
and the beauty with the God, the beauty of the God on all those natural phenomena. Because he had been carrying a soul that is as beautiful as that of God. If you could, if you could see for an hour the glory of the God and the shadows of eternity always looms large in him. But all those eternal journeys, all those eternity, and the heat of the fire ever blooming in the abode of God, which was still making warm, radiant, bright and beautiful, the early days of the poet is no more now. Gradually, the poet says, he has taught my tongue to wound my conscience with a sinful sound. All the sensation, all the five senses which are meant to communicate with the God gradually, gradually, day by day, hours by hour, minutes by minute, he loses the real purpose of those senses. The tongue which is to utter the glory of God is being wounded by uttering foul words of this world. The conscience which should have been bloomed with the glory of flower is now full of sinful sounds. Had the black art to dispense a several sins to every sense, like that of a black magician, every sense and every sense, every conscience of his has been driven by those black arts, the magical powers of all this attraction, all these distinctful desires of this world has attracted. The, go the godly power or the spirit of the God is gradually losing its power. Me, myself, is far, far removed from the abode of God and we are gauging and we are gradually approaching towards nonsense or with no sense as the real sense is the sense of supremacy of the God and the ever burning fire is the only heat that we should appreciate. But sinful sounds and the scenes that has covered entirety in me like that of a magical fleshly dress that we carry in the name of body that bright suit of everlastingness or the everlasting bright colors of the God, the bright illimiting fires that are the fire of soul that is spontaneous, continuous and omniscience, omnipresence and omnipotence is no more in the power of poet's achievement because the burden of this worldly existence has ruined his life. Then he further says, Oh how I long to travel back. If we are far removed from the home, we become homesick. This life of ours where we come to spend a few days in the name of age, years, is like that of a second home, a shortcut travel. That travel is not meant for everlasting. That travel is short-lived and it has its destination named after called life. As I travelled, the poet says, as I travelled the journey of life, now I long for that abode of God to travel back. I like to retreat in that way where on the path I have come through here, the ancient track, traits I should follow. 
and the desire of the poet is quite clear. He might once more reach that plane and past. I left my glorious train. The poet says he might once more reach that plane. The poet has the ultimate desire of uniting with his God. And he has the full desire that he will ultimately be able to meet with his God. He has left the glorious train of angels when he first left that place. The shady palm trees, the enlightened spirits, everything is where in the abode of God. I have left those places. Now I like to retreat. I like to come back to the abode of God. But how can I take this long journey? How can I take my soul has become heavily drunk and I have hardly any power in my way to navigate back into the abode of God. I stagger. The poet says he staggers in his way. Many of us, the poet says, only love worldly pleasures. Worldly pleasures, the pleasure of sensation, sensualization and the carnal desires. But what are the meaning of this? But what are the meaning of all this nonsense? The poet says, some many forward motion love. The forward in that sense, the so-called worldly forward. Forward in the name of more money, forward in the name of a big mansion, forward in the name of a big name, forward in the name of a big popularity. But the poet says, I by backward steps would have moved. The poet's journey should be a backtrack. Because if he march forward, he would be in hell. But if he retreat, if he comes back, if he steps backward, he can have a possibility of meeting his God from he comes from and when his dust falls to his arm in that state I came return when the poet says he will die the ashes of his this earthly life will be fallen into the urn he will be able to return into the God the unite with his first master in that state I came at the time. I being a person after the death poet says that he will be of the burden of these worldly desires and he will be as innocent as that of a child and in that way he can have a possibility of returning with the supreme lord God. As I have told you retreat is full of sort and concrete concepts. These are metaphysical concepts. Homely images, compressed sentences, and especially that uh, is quite common in metaphysical poetry. You can also find out in this poem. But compared to other metaphysical poetry of John Dunn, even the other poems of Harvard, you can find it quite easy one. Even the poet expresses his devotional thought through extraordinary straightforward imageries. Uh, we can have this particular poem as a ready-made uh, reference to metaphysical religious concept. Just to look at these two lines. But a, but hey, my soul with too much day is drunk and staggers in the way. The image is quite clear. He states very straightforward manner that we the human being are much saint like that of a drunkard. As a drunkard is drunk by its wine, he 
all the entirety of the humanity is drunk by the sins of this materialistic world, the run after money, living a, a spiritual life, and living all sorts of crimes and criminals, even forgetting the Supreme Lord God is itself a crime that we are committing each and every moment of our lifetime. In another way, further the mystical ideas, childhood, the God, innocence, the journey of soul, the abode of God, that city that has been uh, a biblical references, everything is so sincere and personal. If we read, if we go through this poem uh, narrowly and widely, in both cases you can have the touch of humanity and personal quality. So that subjectivity of this poem is quite clear and straightforward. Taken from homely affairs of life, they are well visualized, you know. We can compare his comparisons to an eminent Victorian artist Hopkins, another uh, religious writer, priest writer, for example, Angel Infancy, The Suits of Everlastingness, Ancient Track, Gloria Strain. These are all uh, linguistic, uh, these are having a linguistic glamour, a heaviness of the phrases uh, that has its own meaning and bonds. These particular right choices make this poem more lucid Boom. yet metaphysical. The metaphysical network and metaphysical conscience or religious conscience is heavier in this poem. It is well read and well popular for its musicality and musical attraction and particularly concrete word imageries. Bond's retreat, uh, we can take it uh, if thematically, it is also superb. As far as syntax and rhyme pattern is concerned, uh, it finds a place of a perfection of English verses. And for inspiration, this particular poem, as I have already told you, inspired uh, Wordsworthian poetry, Immortality Word which tells the same thing, the innocence of the childhood and uh, the reminiscence of the God at the early ages. This uh, no doubt a beautiful poem and the melody and the grace and the fullness of the or the entirety of the text also arrest us. So uh, you can read this poem. I have given a simple connotation of the or the simple meaning of this particular poem. If you have the interest in this particular poem, you can take it seriously and uh, read it further with better metaphysical understanding and you can uh, also question me regarding this. By the way, you can also log in my blog and here you can have this kind of topics and related discussions further. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.